Welcome back to Echoes of the Ages. I'm your host, and today we are conversing with one of America's founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. This is an AI simulation trained on his letters, personal documents, and other writings. We're here to explore his thoughts and ideas in a unique way, so let's dive in. Mr. Franklin, it's an honor to have you here. You're one of the key architects of the United States, and it's still going strong today. How does that make you feel? Well, it's quite a surreal experience to be here in the 21st century. The fact that the United States is still thriving is a testament to the enduring principles we established during the founding of the nation. It's heartening to know that the seeds of liberty and democracy we planted have not only survived, but flourished. Quite an achievement indeed. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. You and the other founding fathers were essentially uh, committing treason at the time. That must have been a little nerve-wracking. Indeed, it was a time of great risk and uncertainty. We were challenging the might of the British Empire, the most powerful entity of our time. But we were driven by a profound belief in the cause of liberty, the idea that all men are created equal, and the conviction that governments should derive their power from the consent of the governed. These principles were worth risking everything for. Hey, and that risk paid off. Uh, speaking of risks, can you tell us about the experiment you did with flying a kite in a thunderstorm? Ah, uh, the famous kite experiment. Yes, it was a bit risky, but it was a risk born out of curiosity and the pursuit of knowledge. That experiment led to the discovery of the nature of lightning as a form of electricity, which opened up a whole new world of scientific understanding and technological possibilities. What would you tell anybody that wanted to recreate your kite experiment today? I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a strong desire to make a personal acquaintance with a lightning bolt. <laughs> what were a couple of your favorite inventions that you came up with? Ah, uh, well, I suppose the most famous would be the lightning rod. It's a simple device, but it has saved countless buildings from destruction by lightning. But I must say I'm also quite fond of the bifocals. They've certainly made reading much easier for folks as they get on in years, myself included. We definitely appreciate all the contributions you did to science, but let's shift gears a bit. You signed the Declaration of Independence over 240 years ago, and it's a document that we still use today. How does that make you feel? The Declaration of Independence was more than just a statement of our intent to break away from Britain. It was a declaration of our shared values and aspirations for a society based on liberty, equality, and justice. The fact that it continues to be a guiding document today fills me with immense pride. It shows that the ideals we championed continue to resonate and guide the course of the nation. You also signed the Constitution. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? The Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution are two sides of the same coin. The Declaration laid out our ideals and principles, while the Constitution provided the framework to turn those ideals into a functioning system of government. Both documents were the result of intense debate and compromise, reflecting the diversity of thoughts and interests among the founders. They laid the groundwork for a new kind of government, one that derives its power from the consent of the governed, not from the divine right of kings. It's a testament to their enduring strength that they continue to guide this nation more than two centuries later. But I must say, I never imagined it would be read on something called the Internet. The Internet has definitely changed things up. Uh, speaking of change, what do you think about the current state of our politics in the United States now? Well, I've always believed that a healthy democracy requires active participation from its citizens. It's heartening to see that people are still engaged in political discourse, though I must say the tone has changed quite a bit. But then again, in my day, we had our fair share of heated debates and political disagreements. The key, I believe, is to never lose sight of the common good. Ah, thank you. That's putting it lightly. But let's switch away from politics. You were known for having a quick wit and good conversation. Can you share... A good joke? Well, I've always been a fan of wordplay. Here's a little something. Three may keep a secret. If two of them are dead, <laughs> a bit morbid, perhaps. But it does highlight the difficulty of keeping secrets, doesn't it? <laughs> I appreciate dark humor. 
But let's close out the conversation. Is there anything you'd like to close out this conversation with or anything you would want to tell the world? I would say never underestimate the power of a curious mind and a kind heart. The world is full of wonders to discover and problems to solve, and each of us has a role to play in that grand endeavor. Stay curious, stay kind, and remember that even the smallest actions can make a big difference. Well said, Mr. Franklin. And with that, we conclude another episode of Echoes of the Ages. Remember, the journey of discovery is never ending. If you could think of anybody else you'd like us to interview, please leave a comment below. So until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning.